Hi everybody, today I will talk to you about GPS and positioning systems in general. To do that, I use a useful resource made by Bartosz Czekanowski, which is available over his website, and I'll give you the URL in the description. After that, we will see how to import GPX files in QJS. I will explain you GPS using its wonderful work. It's perfect, in my opinion. So let's take a look. Okay, what is GPS? It's a global positioning system. So it's a system that gives you the position in uh, space uh, and it works uh, using just a Mm, very inexpensive uh, device that reads signals from the satellites and gives you a position. You can use a commercial one uh, like uh, the one you have in the in your uh, smartphone, for example. It's quite mm, different, really, as it it is an assisted GPS. But mm, let's uh, take this uh, as a common GPS device. Also, you can have a professional one just using the, um, an external device that it's able to differentiate information. No, that's not uh, what uh, we are gonna talk about now. So, uh, how GPS works? It works using a bunch of satellites actually orbiting around the Earth, but this is what you, I think you already know. The, the interesting thing is how it works, and actually we can start using um, simple positioning. So uh, let's try to figure out uh, where we are knowing we have three points in the, um, which are known and fixed so three landmarks for instance and we can make this figure move around uh, uh, the green uh, space so if we are near a point we are actually near that, so we know mm, the position with only a little bit of uncertainty. But if we move far from this, our uncertainty, the yellow area here, is bigger. So we cannot ac know exactly where we are in space. Also, we can take the one of these points and attach a rope to us and to this point. And this rope will limit our movement around the, the point. But if we know the, uh, that the rope has a fixed length, so we have limited, we can think uh, to replace the rope with something we can meter, so uh, a meter, and we can move far from the point and we get the measurement from that point. And this circle here is the consist of, consists in all the points which are at the same distance from the point, so it's, the radius is the distance. If we have another landmark with the same concept, we can draw two circles and we get two possible positions. Again, if we have a third one, we have only a, an intersection is possible, so we have only one point. This obviously works in 2D and the third one is redundant 
because we um, almost know where we are but in the reality we cannot use this method so we can think about something that can measure the distance between us and the point and a, a drone maybe may fly between you and the point and we know the time it takes so if we know the time of flight as functional to the drone velocity so the, the distance is actually just a multiplication if we have two points here two um, times we can know the, the two distances and we can uh, intersect calculate the intersection between the, the circles so now having a drone is not the correct way we can use sound waves it actually is the same so we can launch a sound meet the sound and when the sound hits the target it blinks and give us time to the time of flight so if we do that or both or all three points we can have the intersection okay but this as in this figure works only if we have an emitter and multiple receivers but only an emitter otherwise we have this and I cannot figure out what's happening here using the blinks of the points so let's switch it it's the points it's the point that give us the signal so pa okay I received the signal and I can track the the time but our time is not in sync with the the other time so we have a uh, a time difference a bias that we can adjust to make it in sync now if we propagate a signal the signal is uh, this the signal's time is biased but what happens if I receive the, the free one and I three I fix the bias oh, oh I found an intersection here from the three one and given that there is only one intersection that works I can compute the bias so here I receive the signals and I move the bias and that is my that's my position and it's wonderful because now I am time independent using math. Okay, now we were talking about 2D. Let's put it in 3D and let's change the, the our perspective. Now we can move the our figure above the terrain and as you can see circles are different and um, what if circles should be replaced with spheres we can ch actually change spheres the circle circles with spheres and we can get an intersection between three spheres but actually there are two one of this point 
is over the head the other one is under the uh, over the terrain the other one is under the terrain so that's okay actually okay perfect this is this is the real computation that is made and it makes possible to to compute the the position in space uh, we have to figure out the bias and with the three positions x y z and we have a system with the four um, equations with four variables so it's solvable and it's amazing another aspect we need to take in, into account as the that we are working the signals that travels at the speed of light and the and signals are um, actually uh, distorted by the rebounds by fraction and they cannot pass the earth so what we can do is to bring it up bring the emitter up and uh, how if we bring the emitter uh, so up we are in space so we can have satellites that do our work this is a brief explanation of how the GPS works. You can find it into the website of Bartosz. I'll give you the description, the URL in the description. So now we know how GPS works, and let open QGIS to import a GPX. So we can know how to work with uh, GPS data. Uh, the common format for GPS file is GPX, and GPX has locations which are called waypoints, uh, sequence sequences of location that mm, make up a planned route and a track log uh, of the what are the position we received before. Okay, let's open an uh, empty project. Let's add background. I like to use the dark one from uh, the Carto DB. Okay, now to work with GPX files, we have to add a new layer and add the GPX layer so we can have the you can select the or drag the path from for the file and we can import the waypoints the routes of the tracks if we want click add and there it is we have let's see the okay we have no roots in this file, but we have tracks. Roots is planned. But instead, the tracks is what it has been recorded by the GPX. If you go on bike, you will see that you can record and export a GPX file or a fit file of a um, TCX file and you can use uh, a nice software which is GPS Babel to translate from one to, uh, to other format and if you have a GPX next you can download it and import it here also you can 
use GPX file to edit OpenStreetMap. So a format which is really nice to have. So this is track from uh, bike journey. It's uh, quite easy to, to import. So we can see what I have import here into the waypoints. You have the all these uh, waypoints here. And if you see the track, we will see if we have one track which is called Indicazioni Stradali, which is uh, actually uh, road uh, instructions. So, at how to, to do this all this way around. Okay, now we know how to import GPX files, which is quite easy, but we have a solid foundation for about what is GPS, Global Positioning System, uh, other positioning system like Colonas, Galileo, are actually the uh, similar to the GPS, the Global Positioning System, which is American, and as uh, it, they all follow the same reasoning uh, about uh, positioning. So I hope uh, this is this has been interesting to you. Thank you for listening, and see you to the next episode.